quiet, forgotten corner of history. There's a story that refuses to be silenced. A story so powerful, so dangerous, that it was almost erased from existence. They call it the Book of Enoch, an ancient old text filled with secrets about the origin of the universe and the mysteries of life. Now this guy was said to be a man who walked with God and was lifted to the heavens to witness things that no mortal normal should ever know. But what could he have discovered that was so unsettling, so profound, that it had to be hidden for centuries? Welcome to the world of Jimmy's randomness, a place where the shadows hides in the dark, whispering secrets, waiting to come alive. Now let's go all the way back to ancient times. It was a period when myth and reality often blurred together. And for generations, the text moved quietly through the early Jewish communities, its words so unsettling that the church decided to ban it, trying to erase it from memory. But the book wouldn't be easily silenced. Copies of this forbidden text were hidden away by those who understood its importance. Over time, however, the manuscript faded into obscurity, and for more than 2,000 years, it was lost to history, its secrets buried deep beneath the earth. Now, in the Bible, Enoch is a bit of an elusive figure. We first meet him in Genesis 5, where it casually mentions that he was so righteous that God decided to take him straight to heaven. No dying, no fuss. Well, that's Enoch for you. But who was this man? Really, what made him so extraordinary? The Bible leaves us wondering, which only adds to the mystery. Many of the early Christian writers of the second and third centuries, figures like Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, Origen, and Clement of Alexandria, were also captivated by his writings. Even the Roman philosopher Tertullian considered it holy scripture. Now what you have to know is that this fascination wasn't limited to a few scholars. Oh no. It spread like wildfire, sparking debates and fueling endless curiosity. What did this man know? And why was his story so compelling? What truths lie within these pages? And why did it capture so many minds across so many centuries? The answers might reshape everything we thought we knew about history, faith, and the nature of existence. Now, back in the day, Enoch's writings were a big deal. They were as popular as today's hit series like Game of Thrones. But then, suddenly, they lost credibility and were banned by the church. The ban was so effective that these writings got left out of the modern Bible. And so, people stopped reading them, and over time they just faded into obscurity. Then came the late 1400s, and whispers started spreading that the manuscript might still exist somewhere. Naturally, forgeries started popping up each claiming to be the real deal. Then there was James Bruce, a Scottish explorer who, in a twist straight out of an adventure novel, discovered the original manuscript in Ethiopia. It was hidden away in the holy collection of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Luckily, this church had preserved the text, even though it wasn't part of the Bible canon. Bruce found it written in Ge'ez, an ancient Semitic language still used in Ethiopia. He eventually brought back three copies, and in 1821, Richard Lawrence published the first English translation. Then in 1912, R. H. Charles released the version that would become the most well-known. Now the book itself is divided into five sections, 
each one describing the man's incredible journeys to hidden places on earth and in the heavens. Places like Sheol, which is the shadowy realm of the Jewish afterlife, a world where the souls of the dead linger in silence, waiting for what comes next. Then there's the abyss, a dark and endless realm that seems to stretch beyond time itself, filled with secrets, too terrible to reveal. What followed up are the gates of heaven. This is where the barriers between the mortal and the eternal world begins to blur. And then finally, last but not least, the homes of the angels, places of pure light. One of the coolest parts of the story is about the Watchers. These angels revealed secrets of heaven and earth, secrets that humans were never meant to know. And because of that, chaos and corruption followed, changing the course of history forever. These angelic beings came down from heaven because they were drawn to human women. Their relationships created the Nephilim, giants who wandered the earth, causing all sorts of chaos and destruction. Next comes the Book of Parables, which is full of visions and prophecies. Here the man sees angels and demons locked in an eternal fight, battling it out together, hinting at events that would shape the future of humanity in ways we can't even imagine. Then there's the astronomical book, which delves into the mysteries of the cosmos. It contains detailed descriptions of the movements of celestial bodies, the nature of the stars, and the mechanics of the universe. What comes next is the Book of Visions, a journey into dreams rich with meaning and allegory. Through these dreams, we witness the rise and fall of empires and the timeless struggle between good and evil. Things got so out of hand that it led to the Great Flood, a divine attempt to wash away the corruption caused by the Watchers. Now, despite these mind-blowing stories, the old text was banned for a couple of reasons. First of all, most of it wasn't actually written by Enoch. It was pieced together by various authors over centuries, falling under what we call pseudepigrapha. Old texts mistakenly attributed to biblical figures. And so, this has led scholars to seriously question its authenticity. For instance, it blames a demon named Azazel for corrupting humanity, while the Bible points to Satan. It also says that fallen angels can repent, which goes against the biblical view that they're doomed forever. All these differences made it tough for the text to be accepted into the official biblical canon. But even though it was left out, these old writings still offer a fascinating peek into ancient history and mythology. And let's not forget the prophecies. It contains predictions that some people think have actually come true. Whether you see it as historical fact or a grand myth, these old writings are undeniably fascinating each one revealing more puzzling insights into the man's life and his strange encounters. The most interesting parts are undoubtedly his interactions with the Watchers. These aren't your typical angelic beings. They're described as giants with extraordinary powers and are often coming across more like demigods or even extraterrestrial visitors. And so, having just the idea that these Watchers descended from the heavens and mingled with humans is both fascinating and unsettling. One of the most talked about parts is the idea of the Nephilim, the kids of the Watchers and human women. These beings are described as giants who cause chaos and mess things up big time. Some say the Nephilim were the reason for the Great Flood because 
their influence led humanity astray. Now this isn't just a minor detail. It's a big theme that makes you think about divine intervention and what happens when heavenly beings meddle in human affairs. The book also gives detailed descriptions of a cosmic journeys. Imagine vivid scenes of the ten heavens, each with its own unique features. It's like reading an old sci-fi movie. These descriptions show how ancient cultures viewed the cosmos and their place in it. One of the main reasons why the writings were left out of the Bible is because they clash with mainstream theology. In these texts, angels have free will and can repent, which contradicts the more rigid view of angels in traditional biblical texts. This inconsistency was a major reason for the ban, but for modern readers, these differences offer a fresh take on old beliefs and the complexities of how the people back then thought. Now, let's talk about the extraterrestrial angle. The descriptions of the watchers and their advanced technology, like chariots of fire and thunderous machines, sound a lot like modern UFO sightings. This has sparked many theories about ancient aliens and their influence on early human civilizations. It might sound far-fetched, but the similarities are hard to ignore and make for some thrilling speculation. And so, it's no surprise that his stories continue to capture the imagination of people all over the world. Now, let's dive into more details. One often overlooked aspect is the cultural context of these writings. The texts were likely influenced by Jewish, Mesopotamian, and Egyptian mythologies. And so, as we start to dig deeper into these stories, it's important to remember that they started as moral tales, shared and passed down through generations. This allowed them to remain vibrant and dynamic, evolving with each retelling. Scholars continue to debate their origins and authenticity, showing just how captivating they remain, even to this day. And that's the end of this journey. So what do you make of all this? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed today's story, check out the channel for more interesting and intriguing videos. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and I see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.